Hello, this is Dave Tim with TimTraining.com. With me is my good friend and fellow outdoor instructor, Ben Johnson. He's currently running the camera right now, but you'll hopefully see him in a little bit of footage. Today in this video, we're going to discuss fire making in wet or rainy conditions for our outdoor preparedness training section. So we're here in the woods and we've been hiking for a little bit. We have some uh, basic gear with us, which you'll see us use in a little bit. And we've selected a site that we want to establish as camp. The first thing we had to do was prepare a fire site. Now we did this beforehand to save a little time for the video, but as you can see, we cleared away grass and we have about three to four inches of wet sandy soil as our base to build our fire on. So it's gonna be very safe. We're not gonna to have to worry about it spreading and it'll be easy to bury the coals when we're done because we always wanna leave things better than when we came. Now, as far as resources go, on our hike in, as well as in the site, we found a few things. Number one, we were able to find some dry birch bark on some downed trees on our hike in, which we'll go over, as well as some chip uh, or shavings that was from a logging site as we were hiking in. And we collected both of those in a small pack that we had inside of our backpack. The other thing we found was this standing dead pine tree. Now, it's not quite fat wood, meaning that the sap isn't as crystallized or hard in the wood as we would like, but nonetheless, it's dry because we were able to break this down and fall the, the uh, top of the dead tree over that we're going to be able to harvest as good wood. So we're going to bring the camera closer and we'll talk about what we have here. This tree here is a standing dead pine tree. I was able to push it over here causing the main uh, part of the, the trunk to fall over. I did that safely, again trying to save time before video. So what we have here is although it's wet on the outside as it's been raining all day and it's still lightly misting, we have dry wood on the inside. And this stuff is very dry. You can see the dust and almost sand like uh, uh, shavings or grindings that we're making when we just do this. So this is going to burn really well. So it's not impossible to find dry wood even when it's wet outside. The humidity is very, very high and already even hiking in we're already a little bit wet. So this is a good resource. We can also use the limbs and branches and twigs off that to make our base which we'll get into in a little bit. It should be noted that whenever you're looking for a campsite, you want to make sure you look for resources. We could spend a whole video on just looking for resources, but down trees, pine trees as cover or shelter, a nice uh, landing or area to prepare your fire, these are all things that you want to consider, as well as proximity for water, food, rescue, and again, we'll do a lot of other videos on this. The purpose of this video is just to create a fire in wet or rainy conditions. So we're going to harvest a bunch of different size wood, and we'll come back with a detail shot in just a second. When you're looking for wood, Wood, here's the difference between standing dead, which we just did a video on, that nice dry wood. It may be wet on the surface, but dry on the inside. Here's laying down dead wood. And we've cracked this open trying to see if there was any dry wood in it. And you can see there's ice crystals indicating frozen water, and this is very wet. So try to avoid the stuff that's on the ground. That's going to collect more moisture, whether it be snow melt or rain. Okay, we're ready to start our fire. Whenever I travel into the woods, I keep a small kit that has no less than three ways to start a fire. The first is a traditional cigarette lighter. Very easy, almost surefire, almost most of the time. And I say that with a little contradiction because if this gets wet, it will not spark. The last thing I, uh, or excuse me, the other thing I always carry is matches in a waterproof container. These happen to be the Strike Anywhere style. Uh, some states actually have legislation that makes them illegal, but you can still find them. And I also use the strike surface either on the bottom of the can or a jean zipper, whatever it might be. And the last is I always carry at least one or two ferro rods and strikers. These work really good. And we're going to do a demonstration. Now for the purposes of this video, we know that right now we could virtually guarantee fire with either the cigarette lighter or the matches. But we're going to use the striker on four different types of tinder. Two we brought into the woods with us, and two that we found out in the woods on our hike in. So we'll just do a quick demo of that one by one. Now that we have our four tinder types, we're going to talk about what they are. First, we're going to talk about the first two that we found in the woods. We found some birch bark, and we were able to find some dry birch bark by peeling away some wet layers. We also then shave and tore this up into a small pile right here. This will spark pretty well. The other one we found is some fat wood or some standing pine that was dead and we just made a small pile of shavings, real small shavings, real lightweight, a lot of surface area right here, just out of a block like this. The two that we brought in is one is a commercial product available that uh, you can either find a everyday substitute in your local hardware store or you can go to your camping store and get this particular one. And you just shave this which will demonstrate and spark that as well. 
The other is a homemade product that we brought in, and this is just a cotton ball soaked in Vaseline. To use these, either shave this and spark it, or just rip this apart so you have the cotton fibers and spark it. And we'll demonstrate all of them now. The first item we're going to spark is this birch bark. And again, all we did is tear and shred this up. So we'll just get our ferro rod and striker, get it close. Oh, almost. There we go. I just had to get a little closer. And now you can see that this lit up very, very well. That's birch bark with a ferro rod. The next item we have is these pine shavings from this block. We've also whittled down a small piece to make a match. This is a little damp, so if we can get even just a little bit of flame, we'll try to light this match. There we go. There we go. We've got our match lit, and some of these shavings are starting to light as well. But now we can take this to our tinder pile. The next item is an item that we brought in. This is wet fire. This is a common item in camping or camping, uh, camping survival stores, things like that. I just whittled a small uh, piece down. You can also find a common man or everyday alternative at your hardware store. It's made by Weber. I can't remember the exact name of it, but it's a, a charcoal lighting solution. It comes in little bricks or ice cube trays, and it's essentially the same stuff, and it's a lot more expensive. The downside is it's not convenient because it comes in a big package, whereas this wet fire comes in a nice, convenient wrapper. We just take a spark to this, and it lights right up. And then we can take our tinder pile to this. The last item we brought in is a homemade item, Vaseline soaked cotton balls. You just literally take a cotton ball, soak it in Vaseline and put it in a small container. When you're ready to start it, you just rip it open, exposing the fibers, and you can take your ferro rod and striker right to that. And that lights right up. Very quick, very easy, very inexpensive and easy to make at home. All right, we're ready to start our fire. As you can see, our uh, Vaseline soaked cotton ball is still going from our previous segment. Now, we created the different sizes of wood. We have very, very small, almost like pencil lead or uh, bar stir straw style size wood. We have drinking straw size wood. We have pencil size wood or thumb size, finger size, whatever, all the way up to larger uh, pieces of log. Now, we collected all this with a folding saw and a fixed blade knife. So real simple tools, both relatively lightweight, common things that you might have with you, especially the fixed blade knife, whether you're hunting, hiking, whatever it might be. Both very easy, lightweight tools that can create a large amount of wood. Now remember, if you're having to spend the night out here, you're definitely gonna wanna have a lot, a lot of wood. You can never have too much wood. So what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna quick build this fire. I'm just gonna spark some birch bark, build it up with the very small twigs, using small twigs, medium, large, until we get to some of the larger pieces of wood, and we're gonna speed it up so you guys can see it from start to finish. As you can see, our fire is doing really well. And this was started with just materials that we found on our hike. In conclusion, when you're picking a site, make sure you prep your site well. We dug a nice big area down to dirt and it's nice wet soil to prevent the spread of our fire. Because whenever we start a fire in the woods, we want to make sure we're doing so safely. Fire needs three things, fuel, heat, and air. Fuel will start with your tinder kindling. The heat can be from a lighter, matches, or a striker such as this and obviously air. Now what we used to build our fire is I just simply did a twig fire and started putting smaller uh, to larger twigs and sticks on there in almost like a teepee fashion. Once the fire had a nice established base, I used a large log as a base so I could lean 
pieces of wood, even damp pieces of wood on that log. That provided air to come in through the bottom and help breathe the fire, as well as to dry out and heat up and eventually ignite these wet or damp sticks or small logs. That's how you start a fire in the rain or wet conditions. Make sure you look for resources and pick a good site to do so. As you can see, it turned out to be a pretty decent night after all, considering it was raining all day and misting this afternoon when we started this fire. In conclusion, wherever you go in the woods, make sure you prepare. Have the proper knowledge and equipment to survive, whether it's planned or unplanned. Thanks for watching this video on how to start a fire in raining or wet conditions. For more information, check out our webpage at timtraining.com. That's T-I-M-M training.com, as well as on Facebook, facebook.com slash timtraining. Stay safe. Whenever you go in the woods, have a plan, be prepared, and you will survive.